In the news, on Kaduna Civil Service, why my government is sacking Kaduna public workers, El Rufai. Jusun's strike sells overcrowded as strike enters second week. Across Africa, technology Ghana to become host of Twitter's first Africa office. On the global scenes, Johnson & Johnson, U.S. calls for pause in vaccine over blood clot re reports. And in business, $2.5 billion fraud. Petrol Union, CBN, Union Bank's case resumes. This is TOS Television, your digital first pan African news network. I am Adesi Walsi, and this is TOS News 360. Governor Nasir El Rufai of Kaduna State has explained that the reason his administration is retransferring public servants in the state is due to dwindling financial resources and increased wage bills, which the government can no longer be able to sustain. On the 6th of April, the Cardinal State Government disengaged about 4,000 local government workers. In a statement signed by spokesperson to the Cardinal State Governor, Muiwa Adekeye, Governor Arufa insisted that the government was not elected to pay salaries of public servants alone, but to also develop the state by building schools, hospitals, upgrading infrastructure, and making the state more secure and attractive to the private sector for jobs and investment. He also pointed out that what it has been receiving from the Federal Allocation Committee since the mid of 2020, like most other subnationals, can barely pay salaries and overhead, adding that in the last six months, personnel costs had accounted for between 84.97% and 96.63% of the FAAC transfers received by the Cardinal State Government. The management of Dangote Cement PLC has stated that the price of a bag of cement from its factories and plants in Abadjan and Boko is 2,450 naira and 2,510 naira at Ibese. The group executive director of the company in charge of strategy, portfolio development and capital project, Devakuma Edwin, stated this in a statement on Tuesday. Devakuma attributed the high cost of cement in Nigeria to the global rise in demand for cement as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. He said that Nigeria is no exception as a combination of monetary policy changes and low returns from the capital market has resulted in a significant increase in construction activity. According to him, the clarifications became necessary in view of the recent insinuation that the company sells cement in Nigeria at higher prices relative to how much it sells in Ghana and in Zambia. Former Governor of Ekiti State Ayodele Fayeshe has alleged that the People's Democratic Party Southwest Zonal Congress held in Oshun State on Monday was characterized by overvoting, among other irregularities. He also added that his camp chose to overlook overvoting because of the interest of the party. Ambassador Taufik Arakbaja, the candidate backed by the camp of Governor Sheyi Makinde of Oyo State, emerged as the new Southwest Zonal Vice Chairman of People's Democratic Party with 340 three votes with Eddie Olafeso, who was backed by the camp of ex-governor Ayofayoshi, getting a total of 330 votes. The Bauchi state government has announced plans to repatriate all commercial sex workers operating within the state back to their various states of origin. The permanent commissioner in charge of the Hisba Corps and the Sharia Commission Bauchi state, Aminu Isa, disclosed this at a pre-Ramadan sensitization workshop held at Bayangari area, a suburb of the state metropolis. He also added that before their repatriation, the commission will take their data through the headcount of all the commercial sex workers operating in the state. Two weeks into the judicial workers' strike, the Nigeria Police Force has lamented that it continues to battle over crowding at its detention facilities. Judiciary workers had last Tuesday embarked on an indefinite nationwide strike in protest to the denial of the government to grant the judiciary financial autonomy, which was also affirmed by a federal high court in January 2014. The strike has, however, prevented the police and other law enforcement agencies from arraigning suspects in court, which have remained short since last week. The National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, NPHCDA, has partnered with the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, towards safety and accountability in the deployment and administration of COVID-19 vaccines in Nigeria. The executive director of the agency, Faisai Shweb, 
who disclosed this in Abuja on Monday, said the collaboration is founded on ICPC's threefold mandate of enforcement, prevention, and public education, and enlightenment to prohibit corrupt practices and other related offenses. Shoaib also stated that the collaboration will ensure appropriate anti corruption accountability and transparency measures are established and sustained throughout the four phases of the COVID 19 vaccination campaigns. This is your Digital First from African News Network, TOS Television. More stories across Africa after the break. In line with the organization's growth strategy, Twitter on Monday announced they are actively building a team to host its Africa headquarters in Ghana. This is said is to serve public conversation and is essential to increase the number of people who feel comfortable participating in it. Ghana was chosen because it is seen as a champion for democracy, a supporter of free speech, online freedom and the open internet. Furthermore, Ghana's recent appointment to host the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area aligns with Twitter has overarching goal, the social media giant said. Ghana's president, Nana Akufo Addo, reacting to the news in a tweet, said the choice of Ghana as headquarters for Twitter Africa operations is excellent news. Government and Ghanaians welcome very much this announcement and the confidence reposed in our country. This is the start of a beautiful partnership between Twitter and Ghana, which is critical for the development of Ghana's hugely important tech sector, he said. In politics, two months after the appointment of Congo's Prime Minister, Samai Lukonde, President Felix Tshisekedi has named his first cabinet, majority of who are young people. It is a team of 56 ministers, 41 men and 15 women. He, however, retained some ministers like former governor of North Kivu, Julian Paluku. Jean Lucien Bosa has been retained in the external trade ministry. Jose Mpanda and Augustin Kibasa will continue heading scientific research and telecommunications and new technology of information and communication ministries, respectively. The new cabinet will have to be vetted by the National Assembly before the presentation of the Prime Minister's government's program. The new team, called the Warriors by President Tshisekedi, is tasked with reviving the Congolese economy. It is also expected to address insecurity, particularly in the eastern provinces of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Somali's lower house of parliament decision on Monday to extend the presidential term and that of the federal parliament by two years has been rejected by opposition leaders and the regional states of Jobaland and Portland, as well as the country's Senate. Jobaland state government said the parliament's move was to set back to rebuilding the country's governance. A spokesperson for Parkland's president, Danny, tweeted that it was an illegal move by the out-of-mandate lower house. Former Somali Prime Minister Hassan Ali Khairi in a tweet said the president will solely be held responsible for what happens or what will happen. On the other hand, President Famajo praised the decision and called on the Somali people to take advantage of the opportunity and participate in the country's political process. United States health authorities have called for the pause in the use of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine after reports of six severe cases of rare blood clot detected in more than 6.8 million doses of the vaccine. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, said it was acting out of an abundance of caution. This the FDA disclosed in a series of tweets. The FDA and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, said they were recommending the pause as a way to ensure that the healthcare provider community is aware of the potential for the adverse events. A joint statement from the FDA and the CDC clarified that the blood clotting was cerebral venomous sinus thrombosis, CVST. It said this type of blood clot needed a different treatment than usual. The common treatment may be dangerous, it said, and an alternative was required. All six cases were in women aged between 18 and 48, with symptoms 6 to 13 days after vaccination. On Monday, the police chief said the officer who fatally shot Mr. Wright mistakenly confused her gun for her taser. In a release clip, officers from the Brooklyn Center Police Department can be seen trying to handcuff Dante Wright before he suddenly lurches back into his car. One of the police officers points a weapon at Mr. Wright and shouts, Taser, Taser. She fires one round and he grows in pain. The officer can be heard shouting after realizing she shot him. 
Late Monday, the officer who shot Dante Wright after a traffic stop in a Minneapolis suburb, Kim Porter, was identified as a veteran of 26 years. The announcement came as protesters faced the police. Hundreds had gathered outside the Brooklyn Center police station for the second consecutive night, flouting the 7 p.m. curfew. Protesters occasionally lobbed water bottles and rocks over newly erected fencing, chanting, kill a cop and hands up. Don't shoot while officers clad in riot gear stand guard. Officers responded by sporadically firing projectiles at the crowd and at one point released a chemical agent that caused people to start coughing. The shooting took place in an area already at the center of national reckoning over police officers' use of force against blacks. As the investigation into Mr. Wright's death in Brooklyn Center was beginning on Monday, prosecutors in a courtroom less than 10 miles away completed the questioning of their witnesses in the trial of Mr. Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer charged with murdering George Floyd last May. This is TOS Television Network, your digital first on African News Network. You're watching TOS News 360. More stories after this break. The World Health Organization, WHO, released a statement on Tuesday saying the sale of live wild mammals at food markets should be suspended as an emergency measure. This came after a WHO team visited Wuhan in China to carry out an investigation on the origins of COVID-19. It was reported that some of the earliest causes of COVID-19 were linked to a traditional food market in Wuhan in China. A WHO report released in March showed that the most likely scenario is that the virus originated in bats, was passed to another unidentified animal, and then transmitted to human beings. The organization said that while traditional markets play an important role in providing food and livelihoods for large populations, banning the sale of live wild mammals could also help protect the health of sellers and buyers. In a separate report released on Tuesday, the WHO said that animals, particularly wild animals, are the source of more than 70% of emerging infectious diseases in humans. They added many of these are caused by novel viruses that have not been recorded before. Wild mammals in particular pose the risk for the emergence of new diseases. They come into markets without any way to check if they carry dangerous viruses, the report stated. And in business, as criminal case against petrol union directors continues at the Federal High Court in Lagos, the Supreme Court will continue its hearing in the case involving the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Union Bank of Nigeria, UBN, and an oil and gas company, Petrol Union Oil and Gas Limited, Das Petrol Union, over an alleged $2.550 billion fraud. The series of incidents upon which the case is based began in 1994 when Petrol Union allegedly fraudulently procured a check from a bunch of Barclays Bank in the UK with a value of £2.556 billion and presented it at one of Union Bank's branches in Lagos with a claim that it had a contract purportedly for the purpose of constructing two refineries, a fertilizer plant and a cement paper bag plant. Subsequent due diligence investigation by Union Bank at the time revealed that the check of bill or instrument dated 29th December 1994 for the sum of £2.556 billion drawn in favour of Gladstone, Kukoye and Associate was confirmed by Barclays Bank to be fake. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni has called the April 11th signing of the East Africa crude oil pipeline deal between Tanzania and Uganda a third victory for them, saying the date is a sentimental one. It was President Samia Suluhu Hassan's first trip outside Tanzania as head of state since she took oath of office on March 19 following the death of President John Magufuli. Music star Olua Tosin Ajibade, popularly known by his stage name Mr. Easy, released a short film two months ago, two months rather, after releasing his music EP titled The Dawn. The project, a Babs Direction film, is a six minute visual supporting the killer tunes and E. Kelly produced lead single of the music collection. The short film was shot in different locations in Ghana. The music narrates, starred, and produced the film. The film focuses on the protagonist's journey from a low life in a prison till he became successful as the man running the street. The film also reveals beliefs that Mr. Easy considers unchanging and also says some things are important in a dance life, such as trust, respect and loyalty. Other songs from the music star such as Leg Over, Decline and Operator has earned the artist more than 1.4 million units in the UK earlier this month. 
Nigerian singer Omar Wumi Megbele, popularly known as Omar Wumi, celebrates herself today as she clocks 39. The songwriter, actress and global com ambassador took to her Instagram handle to celebrate herself as she posted a stunning picture of herself and captioned it, Happy birthday to me. I'm so in love with the person I'm becoming. Click the link in my bio as my gift. You can send it physically. Meanwhile, notice anything different about me? The award-winning musician rose to fame during the 2007 West African Idols, in which she finished as the first runner-up. She won the Best Vocal Performance Female Award at the Hedis in 20, 2009, I beg your pardon, with her song In the Music. And in 2018, her song Butterflies earned her another award. She also starred in some films which include Inhale 2010, The Return of Jennifer 2011, amongst others. This is your Digital First Pan African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching TOS News 360. Sports stories come right after this break. Do stay tuned. Stephen Curry made history by becoming the Golden State Warriors' all-time leading scorer with the ninth 50-point game of his career in Monday's NBA victory over the Denver Nuggets. Curry, who joined the Warriors as a first-round draft pick in 2019, scored 53 points in the 116-107 to win. It took him to 17,818 points and passed Wilf Chamberlain's record of 17,783. That's why Curry's landmark moment and the victory, the Warriors are 10 in the NBA's Western Conference. British and Irish Lions head coach Warren Gatland has announced his coaching team for the 2021 tour to South Africa. Gregor Townsend, Robin McBride, Steve Tandy and Neil Jenkins will assist Gatland for the tour to the home of reigning world champions, the Springboks, as well as the pre-tour test match against Japan at BT Murrayfield on Saturday, June 26, for the Vodafone Lions 1888 Cup. Scotland head coach Townsend will take charge of the Lions' attack. This will be the first time the former Scottish fly half will have been part of a Lions coaching team, having previously toured South Africa triumphantly as a player in 1997. Nigeria's captain Ahmed Musa is set to return to the Nigeria Professional Football League with Kano Peelers. TOS News team gathered that Musa is considering a proposition to play some matches for his former club in Algeria, Kano Peelers, in a move hoped to boost the local league and maintain his personal fitness. Musa is yet to play competitive club football since he left Saudi Arabian club Al Nasser in October 2020. However, a return to Kano could revive his career, a city where he spent three years before his first European surgeon in VVV Venlo. And that is TOS News 360 on your digital first pan African network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TOS Television Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS News 360.